The commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen, says, he says, if you see yourself committing sins, listen carefully. He says, if you find yourself committing sins, while God's blessings continue to be showered on you, فالحذر الحذر, then be careful because this could mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given up on you. In other words, God says, this person's not going to wake up. This person is a lost cause. So if he's going to hell, then let him deserve going to hell. Na'udhu billah. He says, if you continue to commit sins, but there's nothing happening to you. There are no trials, there are no difficulties, there are no pains, there's nothing. Everything is going perfectly, everything is going smoothly. Then be careful because something might be at play that is beyond your control. Right? There's another hadith where the commander of the faithful says, he says to him, he says, Al-hadar al-hadar, fa'innahu qad ghafar, fa'innahu. Al-hadar al-hadar, beware of Allah. For he continues to cover your sins so much so that you think that he has forgiven all of your sins. You think that, it, that all is forgiven, but it's not. It's just that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is choosing not to punish you because he's entrapping you, because he's leading you. Na'udhu billah. Sometimes this happens. But people. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, then you will get a smack across the back of your hand. The problem is, we want our actions not to have any consequences. And we think that if I'm getting a smack across the back of my hand, it's just going to be like a light tap, but it's not. We're talking about divine chastisement, brothers and sisters. And we seek refuge in Allah from His divine wrath. Divine chastisement often comes in the form of you losing your nearest and dearest. Na'udhu billah. If you had to lose someone close to you because of the sins that we commit, is that worth it? Is it worth it for us to enjoy momentary happiness by committing those sins or by making that extra buck or by having that item which I love to have even though I know that the way to getting it is haram. Is that really worth it when the punishment will come in the form of me? Not just myself falling sick, for instance, but say your son, your brother, your parents. Is it worth it? But sometimes that really is the only way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could wake us up. Have you not seen people who go through troubles only to suddenly become religious? Because it's at that point when they're most fragile do they then remember how weak and deficient and insignificant they are in the face of the glory and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when they turn to Him for help. And they're reminded that they're weak. They're reminded of all the wrongdoings that they committed. We want our actions not to have consequences, but that's not how it works. لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Ismail, the son of Imam al-Sadiq, he said to him, Are we the same as everybody else? We are the descendants of Abraham and Ismail. We are the descendants of Rasulullah. We are Sayyids. When I commit a sin, is it, will I be treated the same way as some random peasant? Imam al-Sadiq answered him with one, verse from the Quran. He said, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ It is not by, in accordance with your desire or the desire of the people of the book, the people of the scriptures. Whoever commits a sin will have to pay for it, Allah says. يُجْزَبِهِ It's not up to you. Actions have reactions. Sins have consequences. That's how it works. Allah has designed the system like this. It's a perfect I.O. system. There's input and there's output. 